Hi guys, Matt from 123MyT here, and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will take a look at the Apple MacBook Air 13 inch with the M2 chip. There are two different MacBook Airs in the current MacBook Air range. There is the older MacBook Air with the M1 chip, and then there is the newer MacBook Air with the M2 chip. And then the M2 chip comes in two different flavors. There is the entry level eight core CPU with an eight core GPU, and then the next M2 chip up has an eight core CPU with a 10 core GPU. They all come with a 16 core neural engine, which controls the AI part of the MacBook. And then the entry level also starts with an eight gigabyte of unified memory and 256 gigabyte of SSD storage. Right off the bat though, I would not recommend buying this base configuration of the 8GB and the 256GB model, as the 256GB SSD has slower write speeds after about 5 minutes of heavy load. So you might be affected if you're rendering videos or playing games, and while it's not a deal breaker, it's just something you should be aware of. I would suggest you upgrade to the 16GB memory and the 512 SSD. And of course that pushes the price up to $1600. Pricing for the base model starts at $1199 USD and goes all the way up to $2499 USD for the 10 core M2 chip with the 24 gigabyte of memory and the two terabyte of SSD storage. Let's take a look inside the box. First up, you will have the MacBook Air itself. Along the bottom, the chassis is held together by tech screws and it also has four black rubber feet to improve the airflow. And on the top, you will have the color matched Apple logo. In terms of accessories, in the box, you will have the warranty and setup documentation. It also includes two color matched Apple stickers. Next up, you will have the 30 watt USB-C power adapter. I tested the MacBook and it uses the full 30 watts when charging and when doing a benchmark under heavy load. You can expect around at least 11 hours of general use and probably up to around 17 hours of video playback. The charging the battery from empty to full should take around two hours. The plug of the adapter comes off and you can buy an extension cable for it. The last accessory in the box is the USB-C to MagSafe cable which is used for charging. The good thing about this is it frees up the two USB-C ports on the MacBook Air. When you take the MacBook Air out and open the lid, it will guide you through the setup process. During this process you will be prompted to set up Touch ID and you will have to train your finger. The MacBook power button doubles as a Touch ID sensor and so you'll be asked to tap your finger to set it up. Now this can be used to unlock your MacBook Air, authenticate payments, or authenticate passwords. If it's one thing I feel Apple never skimps on, it's their displays. The MacBook Air comes with a 13.6 inch Retina LED backlit IPS display. With a resolution of 2560 by 1664 at 224 pixels per inch and up to 500 nits of brightness as well as True Tone technology. And it makes for some pretty impressive movie watching. Let's take a look. Creation is an act of sheer will. Life will find a way. We created an ecological disaster. We could use your expertise. Why do they always have to go big? Jurassic World. Across the top of the MacBook Air you will have the upgraded 1080p FaceTime HD camera with the indicator light. This means you will get a higher resolution picture when making those conference calls. All the MacBook Airs come with the backlit magic keyboard and it's a delight to type on. The keys do not bend when pressing and they don't tend to wobble too much. The backlit magic keyboard is controlled by the ambient light sensor and only turns on when the lights are low. Let's take a look. The trackpad is still pretty much the same, no changes here. It's a force touch trackpad and it allows for precise cursor control and multi-touch gestures. The MacBook Air M2 comes with a four speaker sound system and wide stereo sound. And there is some design change here. On the M1 Mac, they were on both sides of the keyboard. 
but on the M2 they have been moved to the back in the hinge. While the sound is still impressive for such a compact laptop, the speakers on the M2 Air for me don't sound as loud as they were on the M1 MacBook Air. Let's take a listen. On the left hand side you have two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports and a MagSafe charging port. Having the MagSafe charging port is handy because it allows you to free up a USB 4 port which you might use for charging. In terms of connectivity you will need to buy adapters such as this USB-C to USB 3 adapter. I'll put a link in the description after this. If you need to plug in an external display, the MacBook Air 2 supports one display of 6K at 60Hz. On the right of the MacBook Air you have the headphone jack. The overall build quality is great and there is little to no flex on the MacBook Air. The midnight black colour is very cool, but the big issue here is it leaves fingerprints. I have not had the MacBook Air out of the box for very long but as you can see, there are fingerprints everywhere. For me, I feel like the MacBook Air is a great size laptop. It feels so much sturdier than the old MacBook because it no longer has the chisel design. If you intend to carry around the MacBook Air, then the MacBook Air is slightly lighter at 2.7 pounds over the MacBook Pro. The display hinge only folds back 160 degrees. However, other laptops go all the way back to 180 degrees, so 160 can feel a little bit awkward. Let's go ahead and run the Geekbench benchmark software. Cool, so the MacBook Air 13 inch M2 recorded a single core score of 1897 and a multi core score of 8939. And if we compare that to the scores from all the MacBook Airs and Pro models, the MacBook Air 14 inch is still the winner on the multi-core score. However, the MacBook Pro M2 is a bit faster on the single core score. When running a benchmark and while the MacBook Air is under load, it's a really good time to check the temperatures and see where the MacBook Air is heating up. I'm in a room that has a temperature of about 20 degrees Celsius at the time of recording. As you can see here, the MacBook Air really heats up in the middle of the keyboard to about 30 degrees. There's some clever design here, as there's, there's no heat where you might be resting your palms and hands when typing. So would I buy the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro? I think I'm leaning towards the MacBook Air. It's lighter, and I like the design change of the more rounded edges and the removal of the chisel design. I also like that you have the MagSafe charging which frees up that extra USB-C port. And while I think the speakers don't sound as loud as the M1 Mac, and another disappointing feature is the slowness of the SSD after five minutes of work on the base model. So I would recommend the M1 MacBook Air if you're on a budget, and if not on a budget, then I would buy the upgraded SSD MacBook Air for sure. Guys, don't forget to check out my other videos such as how to erase all content and settings on your Mac before you sell it or give it away. And do me a favour, if you know anyone who might like this video, share it with them, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon. focus on surviving. How long can we last in all this?